everyone, and welcome to our sixth weekly video update from Mark Outlet Seeds. I'm standing in our Clearfield Canola Trial near Niverville, Manitoba, where we have the 45H76 on the left and 46H75 on the right. Both hybrids are at the same stage at the moment, haven't bolted yet, and are reacting very similarly under these growing conditions at this time. Through scouting this field, we have observed some early signs of black leg spores in lush green areas, as well as some insect pressure on smaller, more vulnerable plants. If you have any questions or concerns about your canola crop, you may contact us at your earliest convenience. When scouting fields, it's very easy to place the blame of damaged plants on insects or diseases. However, there are some environmental stresses that may cause very similar symptoms in a crop like canola, such as stress bolting. Stress bolting is when the plant will elongate the stem before it has enough leaf area index to support flowering or potting. The result is a prematurely bolted plant with very sensitive buds that may die off or be stunted due to the weather. Hi everyone, we're in a cornfield in the Drew area. Last year's crop was canola, so some of the corn is exhibiting some, some purpling effect. Mike, is there anything any of the producers can do at this stage to maybe help uh, enhance the growth of these plants? At this stage, what we really need is a, a good few weeks of good growing conditions. At this stage, that boss isn't readily available for the corn plant. We just have to wait for those roots to expand out and explore those soil for background levels. Generally, when we do have boss, uh, foss efficiency in corn it's following canola crop just because canola does lower background levels of mycorrhizal in the soil which corn does rely fairly heavily on for early foss uptake. And to the right here we have a different hybrid. This is very indicative of how the area is showing now in our recent rainfall amount. Uh, so we're off color and a few other symptoms going on. Anything there that the producer can do to maybe help the corn grow out of it? Yeah, so we're seeing a little bit of nitrogen and sulfur deficiency in this field. Uh, both of those nutrients are, are mobile within the soil. So at this stage, if a large area of the field is showing these symptoms, we can still come in with a, with a side, with a side band application or a dribble band application with those two nutrients to uh, rescue the crop. Great. Um, any questions on that, please call the office. Next up is uh, soybeans. We're going to take a quick look at some soybeans in terms of some of the effects that we've had after last week's rain. Mike, any comments on what's going on here in this field in the lower parts and in the, in the ridge in the background? In this particular area here, what we have is some IDC, iron deficiency chlorosis, starting to show up. And this is generally the usual place we'll find it is on the outside of our low areas where we're starting to get an accumulation of salts. Uh, where we get this accumulation of salts is where we're um, the iron is becoming less available for that plant to take up. So that's why we generally see that, that yellowing on the outside of these low areas. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for watching this week's video and have a great weekend.